So we're out here today with the Springfield 911. We've got some federal white box. We're gonna run full mag plus one. It's my turn. Graham usually gets to have all the fun. Little tiny thing, but it's really comfortable. Put that first round in there. See. Oh, let's do this. I'm gonna be shooting that ABC zone out there at about 20 yards. Let's take it off safe and it'll see what it'll do. <sighs> Got away from me there for a minute, but I really enjoy the way this feels. Who's hungry? It's what's for dinner time. For 380, we start off at 65 grain. You notice we've got different profile of bullets. These two, the Remington UMC and the Remington HTP, I suspect are the same thing. Just different packaging, different pricing. They look pretty similar and, uh, well, they weigh the same. Anyways, we got our steel case. That's a 91 grain. Then uh, an FMJ. We have an interesting 94 grain jacketed hollow point with exposed lead from PPU. Then in the 95s, we've got a full metal jacket. We've got a full metal jacket, snubby nose. And we've got a truncated metal jacket and an aluminum case. We got three rounds of each because we're looking to see does it pick up from slide lock? Does it create enough energy to cycle the gun? And lastly, will it lock the slide open with a third round there just kind of as a bonus. Anything past that is testing the magazine, which we already did in the full mag plus one. Let's see how it does. So we're going to start what's for dinner out with this Liberty um, 65 grain. Going to start up at circle number one. A nice little round. Next up is the Remington HTP jacket at hollow point in 88 grain. This little thing is so much fun to shoot. Ah. Drop that and put it back in there. So what happened there? Did we not have the hammer come back? The hammer fell and didn't go back. Yeah, I'm not sure. The primer is good. No, the primer is not good. Put it in and see. Yeah. Nope. No bang. The hammer didn't fall. Yeah. And now it's stuck. So apparently that round didn't seat right. We're going to try it one more time. It just slides all the way forward. Okay. Maybe that was the issue. All right, next up is the Remington UMC in 88 grain. It's also a jacketed hollow point. We suspect it's probably the same round that we just shot. Circle number three. And again, I'm, I don't know what the issue is, huh? Smack the slide forward. Slide's not going forward. Try this again. I wonder if it being such a small gun that my hand is interfering somehow. On the slide maybe. maybe. And again at the number three.
I still don't have fire. Safety off. No trigger. We're not sure exactly what's going on with these Remington rounds, but we're going to try it again. It could be that there's not enough energy. It could be that the shape is not seating right. Um, we've confirmed it's not an issue with the trigger. I, it is just not going in there. Click no bang. That one went. So, and I hope uh, the mic's picking this up. Uh, the click no bang, we have a definite good strike on the primer. The lighting will pick that up. Uh, just did not go. I'm going to set that round aside. And just in case uh, it's operator induced, in that if Tia's wrist is not absorbing it at all, I'm going to try three more rounds of the same ammunition. Uh, real quick, just shooting off into the dirt to see if we can make this gun run on this load. You have a little bit of friction there at the very end of the lockup. That last millimeter or two of travel isn't going smoothly. So with a, with a very stiff wrist, it's still cycling. Um, could be that just the energy that round is producing is right on the limits of what will cycle this gun. This is why we do what's for dinner. Let's continue. That was fun, but let's move on. We've got tool 91 grain. This is the aluminum cased ammo. Steel cased. Steel, excuse me. And I'm going to shoot it target four. Didn't chamber all the way. Give, give it a smack on the back. All right, let's see. So, a lot of times I have these issues when I'm riding the slide all of. I'll ride it a little too hard and that has caused me issues in the past but I'm using the release so I don't want to accept full responsibility but it's possible target for well, all of those ran and they ran well Next up is this S and B. I tried the fancy words. That doesn't work very well for me today. It's 92 grain. Let's see how it does on circle number five. Let's use that. There we go. And I did just push the uh, slide forward a little bit. Oh, I really like that stuff last two rounds have been nice. Next we've got some PPU jacketed hollow points. These are the exposed lead type. Looks like the tip was just chopped off. Uh, 94 grain for target number six. Close well. Little bitty gun. Lock back. Now I've got Arms Core 95 grain. This is a full metal jacket. Round nose for target number seven. Ah ha! ha. Slide just bit my knuckle. Not bleeding though, <laughs> and kept everything in the target. Winchester white box, 95 grain. This is a snubby nose. I know some of you prefer more technical terms, but uh, I don't. <laughs> For target number eight. Now I'm afraid this gun's gonna bite me. Oh, 
I will say the uh, front sight sure is easy to pick up. Draws your attention in. Another round nose, the Spear Lawman 95 grain TMJ, which I understand can uh, be quite a health problem for the bad guy. <laughs> Target number nine. Don't bite me, gun. Woo, this is snappy stuff. Grouped about the same. Now I have blood on the gun. <laughs> Some Blazer aluminum, also 95 grain, this time TMJ. And a little bit of blood. Well, that's what happens, folks, when you've got large hands and a little gun. Target number 10. Don't hurt me. For five shots from seven yards, going to be using some uh, federal RTP range target practice. This is a 95 grain full metal jacket. And I'm going to use the Pinky Rest magazine because I'm trying to keep my knuckle from uh, donating more tissue to this gun. <laughs> I'll be shooting at the left circle square. Hold this thing as low as I reasonably can. That got my knuckle again. So for my five shots from seven yards, I too will be using the federal range target practice ammunition. It's 95 grains. Not as worried about the biting as Graham has to be, um, and thankfully I have a brace on, so. I'll shoot at the right circle square. Eh, it's not my best day. So, aside from a bloody knuckle, and a nice little stain on the back of the gun here, uh, which as many of you know who have been very patient, thank you for your patience. We've had this gun for a while. First time we took it out, it ripped me up. We moved on to some other guns, came back, and it just, uh, you know, I gotta hold high to control that recoil and that snap, but if I do that, I get cut. So I hold a little low, it gets a little snappier, and uh, that back edge is just, uh, it's sharp. I mean, it, it's physically sharp. So, that's my problem. This hand and this gun, not a good size match. Very easy to conceal though. Onto the gun itself, you know, it looks like a 1911, uh, handles a lot like one. The trigger actually pivots instead of sliding back, so that's a little bit different. But uh, the sights are easy to grab, loaded chamber indicator, uh, the, the G10 grips that come on the gun are pretty nice. Overall, it's a good performer. Uh, I'm kind of glad that we had that experience with the Remington ammo because, well, there's a reason why we do what's for dinner. We've had a long string of guns that it wasn't an issue on. That's great, but not every gun's that way. And uh, this gun being an actual locked breech 380, which you don't see very often, it's not surprising that it's going to have some ammo sensitivity. All that means is if you like this gun, check your ammo before you depend on it. But it shot pretty well and I didn't think I was going to group like that with that RTP. That that did pretty darn good. So uh, big thanks to our friends at uh, TJ Gun Sales in McMinnville, Oregon for stocking that stuff because I hadn't seen it before even though it's fairly common ammo. Uh, good gun, reliable with the right ammo. Just verify your hand to gun ratio before you try it. So when he first told me we were gonna have to be reviewing this, I was hesitant um, only because in the past, I've had some 
very painful experience with small handguns, and I won't name it by name, but I, I got rid of it. Um, it wasn't pleasant. I'm really impressed with this. Not shooting the best today, um, but I still feel comfortable enough in the way that I was shooting in the way that the gun performs that I would consider this for an everyday carry. The, the grip on the, the texturing on the grip, it looks sharp, but it applies pressure in, in all the right areas so that it helps me maintain um, my control and grip of the gun. The sights are really easy to line up for me. I've been struggling and practicing with my sight picture, which is improving. Um, so I really appreciate the two different colors, white in the back and green on the front. Aside from the issue of the ammo, all the other ammos that we've ran through it run really well. Not, I think one or two of them were snappier than we expected. And the trigger pull on this for me is a dream. Really like it.